Francis, the man of God, left his home behind, abandoned his inheritance, and became poor and penniless, but the Lord raised him up. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis' footsteps, we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. In the month of Nisan, on the 20th year of King Assasurcus, when the wine was in my charge, I took some and offered it to the king, as I had never before been sad in his presence. The king asked me, why do you look sad? If you are not sick, you must be sad at heart. Though I was seized with great fear, I answered the king, may the king live forever. How can I not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been eaten out by fire? The king asked me, what is it then that you wish? I prayed to the God of heaven and then answered the king. If it please the king and if your servant is deserving of your favor, send me to Judah, to the city of my ancestors' graves, to rebuild it. Then the king and the queen seated beside him asked me how long my journey would take and when I would return. I set a date that was acceptable to him and the king agreed that I might go. I asked the king further, if it please the king, let the letters be given to me for the governors of west of Euphrates that they may afford me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. Also a letter for Asaph, the keeper of the royal park, that he may give me wood for tendering the gates of the temple citadel and for the city wall and the house that I shall occupy. The king granted my request, for the favoring hand of my God was upon me. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon, we sat and wept. We, when we remembered Zion, on the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Though there are captors ask of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous, sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Every time I come upon this particular gospel story, it always reminds me of uh, Whoopi Goldberg as a nun and all those nuns and Sister Act singing, I will follow him. It always brings a smile to my face. Uh, to my heart whenever I'm able, whenever, whenever we come to this particular kind of uh, gospel reading uh, each year. Um, so what's interesting about uh, our gospel reading today is that uh, it, what it never told us is how those three would be followers or would be disciples responded to Jesus' comments or to Jesus' teachings. Like they never told us how those three kind of reacted to it, whether they, they decided to follow him and and did what he asked them to do, or they kind of sat back and say, well, I'm just going to follow after I really want to take care of, of my family or of, of, of burying the dead and all the kind of things, kind of reminding us of the parable of the rich young man who turned away sadly because he could not bear to, to follow radically what the Lord is asking him. So what this gospel never told us is how those three responded to our Lord's comments, our Lord's teachings, our Lord's uh, declaration. But I think that, that the open-endedness of today's gospel gives us an opportunity because it allows us, through the open-ended uh, way it is presented to us, it allows us to be able to enter into the story. And it allows us to be able to put our own spin into it, to be able to put our own kind of conclusion to it. That we also, as would-be followers, would-be disciples, potential followers of Christ, however we want to call ourselves, we now have an opportunity to put ourselves into the gospel and to see how, if I was one of those three, how would I respond to our Lord's invitation? How would I respond to our Lord's comment as he has presented in the gospel? And it also bears in mind for us to be able to kind of reflect seriously about the, the radicality of what the Lord is asking, because what this presents to us is that the Lord is asking us to follow him, to make a commitment, even though we may not know what it will look like for us what the fruits of this would look like for us. Not knowing if we will ever be comforted, if we will ever feel comfortable when we follow him, not knowing if how the world will judge us if we choose to follow him, not knowing what this would look like in our future relationships with our family if we choose him over others, would we still choose to follow him in the way that he's calling us to follow him, to put him above all of these other things? And that's a very serious thing for us to really kind of question about, and I think it's a good place for us to reflect upon today. But what is comforting about our gospel is that it does not leave us in the dark, because there are those who have experienced this in their own lives that kind of show us a great witnessing to how this looked like for them when they radically chose to follow Christ. Of course, the saint we celebrate today is probably one of the best examples of that, St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, we all know that before he was known as the rebuilder of churches, before he was known as the lover of creation, before he was known to be somebody who was privileged to carry the wounds of our Lord in his body, St. Francis was first of all somebody who radically chose to follow Christ over and beyond what the world is calling him into. He chose to follow him even if it means putting a strain in his own relationships, even if it means the world was laughing at him for this radical choice that he made. St. Francis chose, not knowing what it's going to look like for him, he chose to follow Christ. And as we can see in his life, he probably did not even have an opportunity to, say, to see, to witness the fruits that are coming out of his decision to follow Christ radically over and above everything else. But I think that the life of St. Francis and all of those other saints, we come to know them and we come to see what it looked like for them, what happened to their lives when they chose God over others, when they chose to follow Christ over others. 
And I think that that for us is a comfort. And maybe perhaps as we reflect on their lives, it will also make it easier for us to be able to say yes when the Lord calls us to follow him, knowing that we already have these examples of the saints before us to learn from. And so may the life of St. Francis today and his radical yes continue to inspire us and make it easy and comforting for us to follow the Lord in the same way so that we can truly follow him and be, be knowing that even though we may not know the fruits of it, but be comforted knowing that there's always something greater when we choose him over others. So may St. Francis continue to pray for us as we reflect on this decision today. Attentive to the example of St. Francis, we now turn to the Father with our needs. For all who follow Christ in the spirit of the poor man of Assisi, we pray to the Lord. For all those in the Franciscan order and all who observe their way of life, we pray to the Lord. For all who labor for the renewal of the church, we pray to the Lord. For all who continue to preach the gospel, we pray to the Lord. And for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you inspire your servant Francis to embrace the life of the poor for the sake of your church. Inspire us with this commitment to the poverty of Christ that we may reach out to others in solidarity and remember our reliance on you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently embraced through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. It is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mario, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, to the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts that we have received, that imitating the charity and apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Let us now pray the prayer of Pope Leo XIII to Saint Joseph. To you, O blessed Joseph, we have recourse in our affliction, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we now, with hearts filled with confidence, earnestly beg you to take us under your protection. 
through the sacred bond of charity which united you to the Immaculate Virgin Mother of God, and by that fatherly love with which you embraced the child Jesus, we humbly beg you to look graciously upon the beloved inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased by his blood, and to aid us in our necessities with your power and strength. Defend a most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, the chosen children of Jesus Christ. Keep from us, O most loving Father, all blight of error and corruption. Aid us from on high, most valiant defender, in this conflict with the powers of darkness. And just as you once saved the child Jesus from mortal danger, so now defend God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Shield us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and strengthened by your help, we may be able to live a virtuous life, die a happy death, and obtain everlasting bliss in heaven. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise at my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. 